like I think if they do like the iPhone model, where you sign up for a two-year contract with Xbox Game Pass, and you can subsidize the price of the box. So instead of costing four ninety-nine, it can be two ninety-nine or two forty-nine, and you can attract you can attract uh, people customers that way. But I, I actually think this goes beyond uh, the physical Xbox itself. I mean, I'm literally thinking this is going to be a Netflix model. Like, yeah. I like Netflix not because of the third-party content that I can see, like Friends and stuff like that, which they took out recently. But anyway, um, I like Netflix for the exclusive stuff they have, like Stranger Things and House of Cards and uh, Altered Carbon, which is coming out this Friday, which I'm looking forward to. I actually to. am really looking forward to that as well. That looks really good. That looks awesome. So I'm like, if Microsoft, Microsoft is building the platform already. If they have the content, and like you mentioned, Jeff, if they can get third-party support on it, although I doubt it, what I think may happen is you'll see, like, a fragmentation of the market where, like, I mean, you see now, you have Xbox Game Pass, you have EA Vault, uh, EA's uh, Vault service, you have, yeah. uh, uh, what um, else? Ubisoft has their own service, you, you, play, yeah. the Uplay. Exactly. If they started do, basically doing what EA's doing right now and just putting their games with that ser- coupled with that service... Which I personally am not a fan of, because then you have to pay different subscriptions, like with Netflix yeah. and HBO and Hulu. Yeah, but at but the I- same time, man, if you think about it, like, if you, like, let's say your favorite publisher is Bethesda and Rockstar. Let's let's just say theoretically. You don't, if, if that's the games, like, you mostly focus on, just pay for those subscriptions. It's the same thing with, like, I only pay for Netflix and Hulu because those are the ones I use the most. And occasionally mm-hmm. I'll subscribe to HBO for a few months when Game of Thrones starts back up, you know, like, yeah. and then I'll cancel when I'm done. I mean, you're right. That that makes sense. But you know, sometimes you 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 would want something like Valve, right? You think of Valve, and you say, "Wow, it's this third party. St- it's this it's this one store on on Windows, and I can I can buy any game I want. Third party, third party, indie, yep. non indie, right? Yes. So that would be the ideal. But that's not gonna happen. But yeah, no, I think Xbox Game Pass is I think Xbox you, Game Pass um, is huge. Why don't you go into the next part of this? Please. Yeah, I think I think that segues into the importance of first party. Uh, Polygon put a uh, an article out today on uh, the lack of first party games uh, on Microsoft side, and I think this ties perfectly because they're trying. Xbox Game Pass is a great thing, and the fact that they're going to put first party games day uh-huh. day eight on the platform. But one of the things that I'm worried about is Microsoft really hasn't had much first party games at all. I mean, you can think of Scalebound, which they canceled. They had Fable Legends, which uh, they canceled. So things like that worry me. So my question to the group is, how important are first-party experiences to you as owners of PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and so on and so forth? Very important. They're I, honestly, important. it's 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 the bread and butter of why I own all three consoles. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's I love indie games as much as the next guy, but it's and I really, like third-party games. I mean, yeah. they're you know Bethesda, you know. EA, Activision, EA, Activision, you know, yes, they're, you know, Microsoft and Sony have made these deals yes. where they, you know, try to turn our attention to one version over the other, yeah. but at the end of the day, I'm going to pick where the hell I, like, I bought Monster Hunter for the Xbox, and Dalton was like, why'd you get it for the Xbox? I'm like, because I wanted something different to play on my Xbox, so yeah. it's not just sitting there waiting for the next first big title to come out, Right. you know, I mm-hmm. want, I want to give credit to all these, you know, console <laughs> manufacturers, because I love their systems. Yep. Yep. And I don't like. I don't want to try to you know play favorites and pick one over the other and stuff like that because at the end of the day I'm going to play all of them. Yeah. Okay. So what, what would you think? Sorry, Marlon, but actually, you know what? Uh, go ahead, Marlon. Uh, the thing is this: like you, you're if you're a con- let's look at Nintendo for the Wii U, um, it barely had any third party support. It was basically just first party for Nintendo, which is basically Donkey Kong, Zelda, Mario. Pokemon. It was just and then all first the party iterations of those games. Yeah. Of those games, you you could live with first party support with no third party support. But if you only have third party support, is what Microsoft is doing right now. You're getting yourself into a very hole because what makes a person want to choose your console over the other ones if all of them are in that ecosystem? For example, let's say that Monster Hunter comes out for all three consoles. Why would you? Preferably use Microsoft if all your friends are playing for the PS4. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it it doesn't make you want to use Microsoft one. It just makes you want to use this Sony one or Nintendo one, depending yeah. on what your friends are playing at the same time. I mean, that's very valuable. Having, having a first party support makes people want to play that console. Yeah. 
Yeah. It makes people want to stay in that console. It makes people want to retain, you know, fan bases in that. And in so, honesty, like Nintendo is very good at their first party stuff. That's pr- that's pretty much what they base their consoles on nowadays, but Sony has done so much work in creating this identity of they've got the, so many mascots they have, now. Yeah, they have so many they mascots. Do. They just have yeah. so many like if I see a first party game come from Sony, generally I'm a going to play it no matter what, and B it's always freaking good. Yeah, yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's really hard to trying to think of something first party from Sony that I've really been like overly disappointed with. Layer on PS3. Okay, yeah. Like <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that game was garbage. Let's let's, let's let's talk about that. Yeah. But I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm just you digress. Yeah, I'm yeah. Digress. You're playing. You're just playing Devil's Advocate. I get it. But yeah, there's there's so many, especially Sony's got a free down right now especially they do yeah okay. they, they kill it and even ps3 they had it especially towards the end they they were starting to gather it i suppose but ps4 this generation is yeah it's all sony i mean microsoft has their you know their basics their you know their gears forza their gears. halo yeah that's it and those really. games are good but they don't have the legs that a uh, no. like I, it's not so, like I don't remember the storyline from Gears Four. I didn't care for Halo Five. Uh, you know, I mean, it was uh, Halo Five was good and everything like that. But uh, Forza is a victim of how great it is, right? Because it's so good, it's just normal. I'm like, yeah, Forza is going to be great. Yeah, sure, okay, you know what it is already. But yeah. The Last of Us is a game that I will forever remember. You know. And God of War, I'm sure, is going to be one of the... Like, from what I've seen on it, it looks incredible. And I cannot wait for it. But there's just stuff that, that Sony has, like... They've become part of, like, Uncharted. Let's, let's go Uncharted. Yeah. Um, you know, they've become part of Sony's identity now. Yes. And you and you just... You don't think of anything that they've made first party while feel is super negative. No, and not at all. Actually, I'll just add in real quick, and uh, I'll I'll try to segue into the into the next part. Sure. Is that uh, Microsoft is really lacking when it comes to first party exclusive? And I think Marlon said it perfectly. When when you have those first party games, uh, you know the players will stay on that platform. Uh, I want to give great credit to Sony because they they saw it a long time ago. Because you know you just don't crank out first party games, you know out of your ass it takes time you need to have the management in place you need to have the teams in place you need yeah, to have, you have the to, capital yeah, yeah you need you have to have to buy rights right. to these publishers and allow you know, or developers right, allow them to you know want to do business with you absolutely yeah you need to have those relationships in place with uh with uh third party the developers food. like insomniac and, and quantic dream who are uh by developing uh spider-man and uh oh my god detroit become human respectively mm-hmm um, Sony, so good. The, yeah, yeah, the new so- Spider-Man game looks amazing. Yeah, that does look PlayStation great. PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, it is. Uh, Sony knew it a long time ago, and, and with the Sony Studios, they have this stable of uh, first-party developers who just crank out content. You guys were talking about the God of Wars, the Uncharted, even in the PS3 days, right? We had the emphasis, the, uh, the the Little Big Plants, the uh, yeah. the Uncharted. I think I mentioned Uncharted already. We even had like uh, like stuff just like uh, on the left, like you know. Things, things you wouldn't necessarily categorize as AAA, and they wouldn't have been made otherwise by any other publisher because you really aren't going to make money on these type of games. Like, I think a Warhawk, I think a Starhawk, mm-hmm. I think... Uh, oh, God, uh, I even forgot about those games. I'm thinking of uh, a Folklore. Uh, oh, Folklore! Yeah. That game was so folklore. fucking good! Yeah, you all have... Man, I'd, love, I'd love an HD remaster of that. Well, yeah. What was that, 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 that card game? game? Was it was like so Little Big good. Planet, but it was like Hearts. Man, I forgot the name of that game. Which game? It was like it was like Little Big Planet, but with carts. I think it's Little Big. Modern Nation, no, 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 Modern, Modern, Nation, Modern, Nation, Modern Nation, yeah. So you have like all these first-party games that, if you look at them individually, you really don't care about the PS3 or the or the Sony platform as a whole. But when you look at them holistically, you're like, wow, that is a huge library of games that I can enjoy. And Microsoft doesn't have that. No. So to segue to our next topic, I think is what can Microsoft do to compare themselves or be comparable with their first party out, uh, output when it comes to Nintendo and Sony. Well, they could acquire EA. That's what they could do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to like before we get really deep into this. Basically what what he's referring to, the there's a rumor going around on the internet um actually kind of today that EA is going to there's three possible companies that they're going to acquire. 
One being the PUBG developer, which makes sense. Yeah. One being the the right. what the fucking fuck, and EA, which is also another what the fucking fuck. I don't know what I'd prefer, Valve or EA. How honestly? <laughs> well, the the thing, the first thing that came to mind when they're like, "Oh, Microsoft might buy EA," I'm like, "What the hell does that mean?" Yeah. For all these sports franchises that EA has made over the years. Yeah. Do they become be exclusives? Exclusive? I think, yeah, that's legal mumbo-jumbo that they'll have to do yeah. with, well, with, with NFL then, and the rights to all that well, stuff. Well, that's the thing, because then I thought of, like, well, you know, Microsoft does own Mojang, but, you know, Mojang still puts out, you know, Minecraft on PlayStation 3 and 4, and uh, the 3, 3DS and the Switch and the all these Vita, other platforms, yeah. even though it's a Microsoft-owned company. So, I mean, it, I guess it could go along those same lines in a way, but... I I'm going to make a crazy, crazy bold prediction here, and right. you guys are going to call me crazy for it. And I, I wouldn't even say it's a prediction. I'll just say, like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Along with Game Pass, which you already spoke about, right, I'm really thinking that Microsoft is getting away from the idea of I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hardware seller. And I think that they're thinking about the cloud and services. Gotcha. Because that's what Microsoft does as a company, right? They don't really sell hardware. They sell services, right? Yeah. Microsoft Office, etc. We I'm thinking if they were to buy EA, and EA is a huge company. I think Microsoft is worth about $150 billion. Last time I checked on Google, EA is worth about $40 billion, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like a lot of money. It's almost a third spend. of the worth of Microsoft to buy this other company. Yeah. So it's a, actually, actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Microsoft isn't worth $150 billion. They, they have $150 billion in, res, in reserve in their war chest, what I can say. Jesus they have, Christ. They have, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to correct that. <laughs> so I have, they have the money to buy EA. Yes, if they absolutely. were to buy EA, I think that Microsoft would venture out and have an Xbox Game Pass subscription, not only in their own boxes, but they would try to put it on as many, sur- uh, on as many platforms as possible. Smart yeah. TVs, PlayStation, Nintendo. And this is crazy. You guys tell me whether you guys agree with me or not. But... I think this is where they'd be heading if they decide to buy EA, which is a rumor. And I wouldn't want them to buy EA anyway, although I'd love to see Mass Effect come back and be good again. (laughs) I think if Microsoft were to buy or acquire EA, I think a couple of things would happen. A, um, it's going to go for the, you know, the regular, like, gaming model that we see nowadays is that there will be exclusive items specifically for the Microsoft console for all these sports titles exclusive play exclusive uh, things and they will still and they will still just give away the regular editions to nintendo and for and for sony but the big exclusives will be on on microsoft if they decide to go on the raffle and netflix then i can see them doing okay so we're doing fifa NHL, nba all these titles uh, on a subscription-based model, where you pay us fifteen bucks every month, that you get to play them without having to do with microtransactions, and, and get their money that way. Because if, from what I'm hearing, is that the government has been doing, trying to crack down more on microtransactions, then I can see them doing this when it comes to their services like Netflix. Like, hey, you don't have to pay all these loot boxes you can just um pay us 15 bucks and you can just get all the stuff in the game me personally I'm, i wouldn't be a fan of microsoft buying any of these three companies um before this rumor uh i think brendan green who's like the creator of uh Platinum's battleground and i may be wrong about this i'll have to fact check myself but i think he said something along the lines of like microsoft t- tried to acquire uh the pubg corp right and if you look if you look at microsoft as a company they really historically they don't compete Right, that's not they. They really don't compete. They just buy the opposition. That's, yeah. you know, they, that's usually what they do. Um, Valve would be the one that I that I think would be dangerous to me as a consumer. And I don't. I, I don't I'm not a PC gamer. I don't. I don't play games on PC. It's cool, but it's not my thing. But I look at Valve, and I'm like, they would try to buy Valve. Why? Because they're a competitor, right? So Valve has the Steam Store, which they sell their PC games, and Microsoft. Also has their own Microsoft Store, which they sell, yeah. which they try to sell PC games. Right, they bought them break exclusively there for a while. They had years for a while, and then eventually moved over uh, to the Steam Store. But I wouldn't want Microsoft to buy Valve. 
because they're just buying the competition. And I don't even think I don't even think uh, the regulators in here in the United States would think antitrust issues would come up, uh, monopoly issues would come up. I'm like, you're buying the competition. So me personally, in regards to the first party problem, I wouldn't want them to buy either any either EA, PUBG Corp, or Valve. I would want them to grow from within, just like Sony did, a stable of first party developers who can crank out first party games. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with that. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean it's like you said, it's all it's a rumored speculation right now, so yeah. we really don't know what's gonna happen. I mean if if, if they do buy EA that, yeah, there, like you said, there are so many other questions that would come up yeah. of like what the he- where the hell do we go from here? It's gonna be a mess. It will honestly. It would be it would be a legal mess. Mm-hmm. It'd be big. It'd be real big in the gaming industry. It'd be huge. Yeah, they'd probably. I mean, you, you're thinking of franchises like Madden, FIFA, uh, Mass Effect, uh, the Star Wars games. Like I remember, Star Wars is like exclusive for ten years to EA. All these things would move over exclusively to Microsoft. Yeah, hey. we, boom. Yeah, but that, like I said, does that does how, where do they go from there? Do, you know, is it, it do they if, if all those games become exclusive to Microsoft console? Like, do you understand? Like, like I obviously you guys understand, but like that would be just one of the craziest biggest deals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I could like. It would change. It would. Ch- it literally change the very fabric of the video game landscape. Yes, it would. It would. Yeah, it would. But I don't think for the better either. Honestly, no. no, because, I mean, it would... It's good. Yeah, I was saying, and, and honestly, I think it would... It, a lot of people would feel like, well, now I'm forced to get a Microsoft system if I want to play so-and-so X game. Because I've, I've, you know, being a former employee of GameStop, I had that conversation with a lot of people where they came in, one, they only had an Xbox One, they wanted to play an MLB game. Sony cornered the market on MLB. They're the only they ones... They sure did. Except actually for this year, because... Uh, MLB license is actually going to be an RBI baseball game, which, which is, it's not as good of a game, but yeah. at least it'll give people on Xbox something to, to play. But, you know, how many, I, I heard it many, many times like, oh, I can only get this MLB game on a PlayStation console. Well, I don't want to spend, you know, $400 just to play yeah. this one game. It's going to stay like that too. It is. I mean, the show is the show is a juggernaut in terms of sports games, and I don't think that's ever going to change. But if 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 Microsoft buys EA and takes away football, uh, what? FIFA, 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 NBA Live, NBA Battlefield, Live, Need for Speed, they'll they would, yeah, yep. Titanfall, all these games. Traffic. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be crazy. But I mean, like like we've said already, it's it's rumors and speculation. Mm. There's nothing set in stone. There's nothing even like. Leaning one way or the other. I mean, there's reliable sources said that this was a thing that might happen, but... You know, yeah, I tweeted often... at... Yeah, yeah, yeah I tweeted at... So. Sorry, I tweeted at uh, Jason Schreier's... Um, uh, Kotaku Jason Schreier. <laughs> and uh, he basically... Uh, he sent me a link for Reset I'm, Era. I'm impressed, posted. I'm impressed that you got a reply back from that. Like, no bullshit. Um, I, like, not, not to toot my own horn, but I've, I've, I tweeted at him before, and he's, he's been nice enough to respond, so... That's very uh, cool. Thanks, thanks, Jason, if you're hearing it. Yes. <laughs> if you ever hear this, thank you. And come we on the show. Yeah, we gotta call come on the podcast. podcast. Yeah, I think we should, when, when, when we put the podcast tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning, we should tweet at him. Yeah, we will. Dude, I will totally do that. Yeah. But yeah, he, he said something along the lines of, uh, on, on Reset Era, something along the lines of, you know, it's, 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 it's a rumor and it's fake until it's proven otherwise. Yeah, but on the flip... companies are constantly trying to buy companies yeah exactly yeah. but on the flip side it's also true and it's going to happen until proven otherwise so <laughs> that, that was just two cents basically i'm just like i'm afraid that if ea I mean, if nintendo if microsoft decides to buy ea then they might start going for like, you know, video game companies like take two or you know, oh my god imagine fucking rockstar or red dead being an exclusive oh my god oh, i'm pissed myself. Oh, Dalton's like, damn it, I'm gonna have to buy an Xbox. No, I just buy a Nintendo <laughs> are... and just move on from there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much our that yeah. our, our thoughts on that. I mean, we'll we'll kind of see what happens from here. Well, yeah, maybe well, I I'd assume I'm hoping within a week we'll know. But I we'd quick, be but... yeah, I would be very surprised. We'll find out probably if it doesn't happen in the next month or two. I'd say it's not gonna happen. But we'll see. Just yeah, move on from that though. That's like that was a good topic though. I yeah. think uh, 
Um, so, I mean, we have a few things to kind of, like, wrap up here at the end, because we don't really have much else to talk about. Um, do you want to give a recap of the race from Saturday, Dalton? Yeah, it was a great race, actually. It was our best race yet. I don't All know right. if you guys watched it or not, but... I, I, I watched most, the majority. Oh, you should have so. watched right up to the end. Tell you what, it was a great race. It came right down to the wire, first and second. We were within a half a second of each other. That's finish. crazy. After 30, yeah, seconds, after 30 minutes of racing, fucking Motorcade took his third win of the year. The last, well, the last lap pass for the lead. Yeah, and Whiteson over here got eighth out of ten. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what happened. So, basically, uh, um, when I got into the pit on the race, I ended up coming out of the pit with... Uh, Look okay, and smiles with the, with with the two guys who were running for first place and second place behind me for about like fifteen seconds. Like, so I'm like, I'm so they were about to lap me in like for like six seven laps. I'm like, oh shit, no, I am not gonna let this motherfucker slap me. So <laughs> I am keeping up with these guys for like seven laps, going one fifty six, one fifty six, one fifty six, one fifty six, and they're like slowly getting up on me. I'm like, no, no, come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. You just got seven more fucking minutes, you can do it. And this guy's are battling it. I'm seeing them going back and forth, back and forth. And, like, at the last second, I just see Phil going, hmm, and just passing smiles and fucking winning at all. I was like, man, what the fuck did I just witness on my fucking rear view mirror? Like, yes. Like, That's awesome. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was easily our best race of the year. So Phil's got, or Motorcade, sorry, has got a pretty big points lead. Now Sweet. He's- also, uh, about the race, it was one thing that I really loved to happen that, that, uh, that if you see the, the stream, you're going to go, what the fuck? So one of our uh, racers called Blee Goose uh, ends up, you know, you know, hitting the freaking uh, railway Damn. really hard at the beginning last of the race. Points too. He was wow. dead last. And and he ends up getting, what, like, what, fifth. fourth, fifth place? Fifth. He came all the way back to fifth. Impressive. Still so second in... points, but he's 11 down to the two. So he needs to pull a miracle next race if he wants to, um, you know, Battling that with motorcade, but for me, it was a hell of a race. I'll tell you that. That's awesome. Three rounds left. They're going to Sundays now for the rest of the year. Yes, yeah, that's going to be the other thing I was going to touch on. Yeah, they won't be Saturday nights anymore. Um, I can, if if yes. if the uh, community is demanding it, I can get the Saturday night stream started back up again. Because Saturday nights work a lot better for me generally. Because yeah. um, because usually, like if I have to work on a Sunday, I have to work till ten, like later. Yeah. So. I don't have to be up as early as I do on Fridays if I have to work if I do a Thursday night stream. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, we'll get that started back up here fairly shortly. Um, um, last thing. Last oh, thing. Go ahead, Dalton. It's your baby. So kind of. I mean, we're doing it. Yeah, it's a, it's a group effort, but but we're doing another game giveaway. Not till June though, because well, that's the, the yeah the rumored Basically, release date. When the, when the game is released, we'll be giving away a copy. Yeah, of Red Dead Redemption Two is a pretty yeah. good one. Uh, yeah. Winner gets to choose their console. Yep. Um, we'll uh, we'll do what we did for Destiny, where you know when we decide a winner, we'll pre-order a copy for that person. Yep. Um, you know, all expense paid, and then you just let us know where to send it, yep. or if you know you're local, just get a hold of one of us and you gotta follow us on Twitter. Yep. Follow subscribe us on to our YouTube channel, yep. and then you know add us with a uh, hashtag um, Red Dead AEG. Simple. Yep. So. That's really all we've got this week, man. It was kind of a long week. I, I mean, a long episode, actually, because we had a lot to talk about. Hopefully, yeah. we can get it spliced together. Yeah, but... hopefully, I can get it spliced together. If not, I will Close most likely put this in and put, put it up in two parts, which is fine. I'll just make sure to write that like title. Yep. Yep. But yeah, that's that's all I've got this week. Yeah. So Anybody else have anything to, to throw at? No. Play. Play. <laughs> so we don't want you to be on me like like so like my thing whole thing is money Tacoma. bags. You're gonna be Gustavo <laughs> Gustavo Stacoma. Yeah, Gustavo. Okay. I hope Tacoma. not. Yeah, but I'll stop for that game for sure. Definitely, man. It, it's it's something I definitely want to play. So, all right, guys. Well, thanks everybody for listening and follow us on Twitter and check us out on YouTube and Twitch. now Instagram and now Instagram. Yes, I actually. I have something that I will talk more about next week regarding our Instagram, so definitely stay tuned for that, and until next time, we'll see you later. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Sleep well.